Hi everyone. So this video is for lesson two, energy conversion. So what I want you to learn is to, to be able to define, explain, and apply the law of conservation of energy. What I'm looking for specifically is can you define the law of conservation of energy? Can you use evidence to explain the conservation of energy? And then can you apply the conservation of energy to determine variables in a system? So I'm going to try to break down what these things mean. I'm going to try to show you some examples from your pretest. So define the law of conservation of energy. Let's start there. One of the, one of the first questions on your pretest was this one. What is the conservation of energy? Give a definition and an example. If you can answer this question, you have some basic understanding of this lesson. Um, if you can answer one of these questions here, you have some really good understanding. And so let's kind of look at this problem. Uh, this was the one where you have a one kilogram block and it's, atta it's attached to a spring. The spring is stretched 0.2 meters from the equilibrium and then it's released. And then after a few seconds, the block is 0.15 meters from equilibrium. And you had to complete the table below. So this is an example of a system. When we say system, it's really just a collection of objects or things that we're interested in studying. So in this case, we have a block, we have a spring, and then we have the floor. So those are the three major parts of this system. And we might be able to answer this question if we know a little bit about the conservation of energy. So if you can answer these questions, then you have a proficient understanding of this idea of conservation of energy. This would be using a model to be able to understand conservation of energy in a system. So let's talk about how we actually answer these questions. Well, the law of conservation, and this is the definition that I'm looking for you to understand, energy is never created or destroyed. It's just converted from one type to another. And this is also known as the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, I think Every now and then, I even make this mistake of when I say that energy was created. And, you know, I might say, oh, the solar panel created energy, or this is how we get energy from the sun. And we might get energy, but we didn't create that energy. It really came from somewhere else. Energy can just be converted from one type to another. But, and it's kind of mind-boggling to think about, but all the energy in our universe isn't going to change. That's one of the laws that we, that we know about science. So whether we're looking at a small system or a big system, the total energy in that system will not change. It just gets turned from one type to another. Uh, on that note, sometimes we'll say that some energy was lost. And really we mean that, that that energy was turned into something that is no longer really useful for us. We can't really use it. Maybe that energy was turned into sound energy, or maybe it was turned into heat that is released to the atmosphere where we can't really use it anymore. But here are some examples of conversions of energy. We have maybe chemical energy being turned into motion. So we eat some food, that chemical energy is broken down, and then we can use it later on in our bodies for some kind of movement. Uh, the, the sunlight, or what we might call electromagnetic energy, gets turned into chemical energy. When plants do photosynthesis, we're taking the sunlight and turning it into chemical energy. Uh, chemical energy in our gasoline, that we can break down the gas in in our cars and make our cars go. And then electrical energy can be turned into thermal energy. If we have an oven that is like an electric oven, then we can use that electricity to make heat and cook our food. So there's many examples of energy conversion in our everyday life. Uh, here's one that you maybe had to look at for this, for this lesson. You had to look at this skater um, at the skate park. And you might have seen that the skater had a lot of potential energy at the top of the ramp, but then as they go down, all that energy is turned into kinetic energy. And one thing you might have observed is that the total energy does not change. The type of energy might change, and you might be, if you added some friction, then the thermal energy started to show up, but what you might have noticed is that the total energy does not change. If you change the person's mass, then the energy in the whole system might change. But then once those settings are set, the total energy does not change. All right, so just to kind of recap what I just said, energy is never created or destroyed. And in the skate park, the energy was changing from potential to kinetic to potential and back and forth and back and forth. Um, the total amount of energy does not change.
and like I said, if you if there was some friction or if there was no friction, then the skater would just go back and forth forever. Now we know in the real world there is friction, and so the skater would eventually slow down unless they put some of their own energy into it, unless they really were trying to keep going. If they were just on the skateboard coasting, eventually they would come to a stop. Um, another example, very similar example, is a pendulum. When a pendulum swings back and forth, it has potential energy, and then it goes to kinetic energy, and then it goes back to potential energy, and it just swings back and forth, back and forth. Okay? Um, the total amount of energy would not change. And again, if there was no friction, the pendulum would just go back and forth and back and forth. Once you add friction, the total amount of energy still does not change. The one thing that does change is some of that energy gets turned into thermal energy, which is really no longer useful. And that means that the pendulum eventually will slow down. And then this was one of the questions that made you kind of think on the pretest about perpetual motion machines. And basically, the way this works is, or the way it's supposed to work, is that the ball goes down this ramp, and it goes down the ramp, and then it launches itself back into the container. And theoretically, it could go on forever. It would be perpetual. What we know about the law of thermodynamics is that every time the ball rolls down, some of the energy is going to be lost. We have some energy lost due to friction as the ball rolls on this metal surface. And then there's some energy lost to air resistance as the ball tries to get back into the container. So this machine actually does not work. The only reason why you might see something like this work is because there's some electric components down here that actually uh, can make the ball like accelerate a little bit more in different parts. But this actually is not something that could do, it, do this on its own. It would have to require some energy being put in to make it keep going. So there is some energy that is being lost every time the ball goes through this cycle. So perpetual motion, mo perpetual motion machines do not exist because of the law of thermodynamics. We are constantly losing energy to heat and friction and air resistance um, that we can no longer use. All right, so let me come back to this final question and let me show you what the correct answer was to this question. I told you that the total amount of energy in a system does not change. So let's imagine that this block was stretched on the spring and then it was released and it was able to go back and forth and back and forth. What we would know is that no matter where you are, no matter what time period you are, the total amount of energy would not change. So what I see from moment one is that the total energy is 10. 10 plus 0 plus 0 is 10. What I see here is that we have 5.6, we have 2, and then we don't know the thermal energy. But we could actually calculate that. If we did 5.2 plus 2, we would need whatever this other number, we would need all three numbers to equal 10. So maybe I'll leave that as a little challenge to you. Think about what would this number have to be for, for our total energy to be 10? Let's see if I can even, maybe I'll just kind of give you a clue. So the total, so the total here, um, let me see if I can use this pen tool to see if I can maybe draw something on here. Um, I want a highlighter, maybe. Actually, I'm, no, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do this because this tool isn't working the way I want it to. But uh, let's see here. Hmm. All right, well, I won't be able to write anything on the screen right now, but... I can just tell you with words that 5.6 plus 2 is 7.6. 7.6 is 2.4 away from 10. So the thermal energy would have to be 2.4. So you can kind of check that math. 2.4 for thermal, 2 for the block, and 5.6 for the spring. And that should add up to 10. So the total energy has not changed, right? That's the rule that we're applying here. And so if we know some of the energies, we can figure out the missing energy by knowing that the law of conservation says that the energy would not change. All right, so there will be some other practice problems kind of related to this. I might make another video kind of showing you how to do the math, um, but that is the basics of the law of conservation of energy.